sexual crimes that he's been charged with. And I know that to a certain extent, he had no defense to any of it, right? There was, he admitted to the stuff at the, at the murder trial. He admitted to it in federal court. So it didn't seem like there was an actual defense for Alec Murdoch, but I'm still surprised that he admitted it and, and, and pleaded guilty. But it is a deal, a deal that I think is controversial because it's, it's concurrency, right? You know what concurrency means? It means he pleads guilty to this stuff and he serves the time while he's serving time for the double murder that he's already serving life for. So from my perspective, it's almost like a, a free crime to a certain extent that you're not getting any additional time for. It does wrap things up. You know, the victims can move move on, they can turn the page, whatever. But I still don't trust him. And I, and I think there's something in this legal maneuvering that he's doing that will, in the end, potentially, not for sure, but potentially um, help Alec Murdoch down the line. And I don't know how. I haven't been able to figure it out. But I don't trust him, not one bit. Take a look, this is him in court um, admitting his guilt pleading guilty and the back and forth with Judge Newman. And as I look at him and, and I see him and I'm, his words, his face, again, I mean, maybe you think completely differently, but as I watch and listen to him, I, I think there's something else going on here. I just don't trust him. Let's take a look. Mr. Murdoch, aside from the um, count or the indictment that you are pleading guilty on the offered, aside from that particular one, uh, do you disagree with any of the uh, facts stated by Mr. Waters? I agree that I, uh, I wrongly took all of that money, Your Honor, and did all of those crimes. I disagree with some of the narrative, but not the essential elements of the, of the facts of the crimes. And do you believe that if you are to proceed with a jury trial on these charges that you would be found guilty? I am guilty, and yes, sir, I, I believe that I would be found guilty. All right, Mr. Harpooli and Mr. Griffin. Nothing, Your Honor, nothing further, Your Honor. Uh, anything else with regard to the guilty plea that you'd like to say today, Mr. Murdoch? No, sir, other than I'm glad to to finally be given the opportunity to, to plead guilty. Um, I am happy to be pleading guilty to these charges for a number of reasons. All right, thank you. Is he really happy? All right, let's get ready for tomorrow's big sentencing. Let's go down to Court TV legal correspondent Chanley Painter, who joins us live from the Low Country tonight. Chanley, great to see you. All right, it, 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 explain to all of us this plea deal. What's, what's going on here? What's it all about? Well, that convicted double murderer will be back inside this Beaufort County, South Carolina courthouse tomorrow for the sentencing phase of his plea agreement, Vinny. And it's being referred to as a global plea deal as it uh, puts all of his financial crimes into one deal. And here's the numbers, what it looks like. This is a, a 22 count guilty plea of the 97 financial crimes he faced uh, before going into this plea deal. Uh, based on 19 different indictments across six counties of South Carolina, where prosecutors say that he stole more than $9 million from more than a dozen clients between 2011 and 2021. And tomorrow we could hear from up to 15 of those financial crime victims inside the courtroom where they will be able to speak directly towards Alec Murdoch and the judge. And of course, we'll hear from star prosecutor Creighton Waters, who at the plea announcement hearing gave us a preview. Here's a listen. And I think as we develop this case, that ultimately what it really boiled down to was such a sense of entitlement and lack of accountability that Mr. Murdoch felt he was entitled to that money. And so he took it. 
most of Murdoch's financial crimes victims, Vinny, were clients in personal injury cases that suffered some sort of loss or a loss of a family member, including uh, the video we showed you, of course, the housekeeper, uh, former housekeeper Gloria Satterfield, her estate and sons. Even Murdoch's own brother is one of his victims and, of course, his former law firm as well. Oh, yeah. His law partner's not happy with him. I mean, made their life a mess. And they've made good on that money, the, the law firm, amazingly. Okay, so this, this hearing tomorrow, it, I mean, it could go one way, but what are the other possibilities that could, that could happen tomorrow when Alec Murdoch is inside the courtroom with his attorneys, the prosecutor, and Judge Newman? Well, the prosecutors and the defense attorneys agreed to a recommended sentence of 27 years, Vinny, that would run concurrent with his double murder convictions in state court. And prosecutor Creighton Waters said that, that he would serve 85% of that 27 years. He would waive any right to an appeal or post-conviction relief by entering in this plea. And then Judge Newman he seemed to indicate at that plea announcement hearing a couple of weeks ago that he was inclined to accept that as a just proposed sentence. But he could also just flat out reject it, saying he doesn't think it's fair tomorrow, maybe after he listens to dozens of victim impact statements. Who knows? And then the parties would have to get back together and come up with some other sort of recommendation for the sentence. But, of course, Murdoch seems to be pleased with it, as you said. And the victims, the Gloria Satterfield's family, they're pleased with the 27 years. And the attorneys for Alec Murdoch are also pleased. Let's watch. He's prepared to serve a long time. As he said to me, as we were going into the courtroom, you know, he feels very comfortable doing prison time for crimes that he did, and he knew that he was going to prison. He does not, does not um, feel comfortable doing prison time for the murders of his wife and son, for which he did not do. And we still are singularly focused on exonerating him. And Jim Griffin today told me that they will not call any witnesses or present any letters and mitigation for Alec Murdoch, but Alec himself will give another statement in front of the court tomorrow. Oh, we'll see what he has to say this time, but no one coming into court to vouch for the character of Alec Murdoch. Shocking. I think the people who may have done it, he murdered, so that's, that's, that's a part of this problem there. Let's get to that murder, double murder conviction. Obviously, there's a lot of controversy surrounding... <coughs> That verdict, the jury potentially tampered with, according to the defense. What's the latest there? That's right. So we are waiting for the announcement of a date for an evidentiary hearing, which will be big news after the bombshell motion from Murdoch's defense team a couple of months ago, alleging that he deserves a new trial over that double murder allegation and conviction because of the Kirk of clerk of court, Becky Hill, allegedly tampered with the jury. They even attached some affidavits to this motion. They got the Supreme Court here, uh, Court of Appeals here to stay his appeal on those convictions so that it can send back this matter to the lower level to have this hearing. So we also know that Judge Newman, who presided over his murder trial, has stepped down and resigned. They wanted him removed altogether. He voluntarily resigned over any post-conviction motions regarding his double murder convictions. Will he likely be a witness now? Because, again, Murdoch's defense is alleging that even the judge heard some things that may implicate Becky Hill in misconduct, which they're hoping will overturn his double murder conviction, send it back to trial court. Other than that, then he has an outstanding federal sentence for financial crimes, plea sentence coming up. Uh, at some point, as well as the outstanding criminal charges related to the roadside shooting with Curtis Eddie Smith. So still more Murdoch to come. And has a new judge been assigned? Have, have we gotten any word on which judge will oversee this hearing to determine if the jury was tampered with in the murder case? No word yet on a new judge to oversee all of that. And, of course, we have our eyes on all the filings for any new update for that. So yeah, we'll I wonder if all the judges to get together and see who draws the short straw on that one. Yeah. <laughs> Chanley right. Painter in the low country tonight. It's almost like going back home for Chanley, right? Spent so much time down there. Thanks so much, Chanley. Yeah. We'll talk to you again tomorrow. All right, let's bring our think tank. Joining us tonight in Englewood Cliffs, New Jersey, criminal defense attorney, former prosecutor Al Wunsch III. 
Also with us in Stamford, Connecticut, criminal defense attorney Darnell Crossland. And in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, family law attorney Jennifer Brandt is with us. Great to see everyone. All right. Um, Al, I'll, I'll begin with you. I, I don't trust Alec Murdoch, but okay. it seems with this plea, he's waiving his right to appeal. So if he gets this Hail Mary victory and somehow gets his double murder overturned, um, he's still going to have to do all that time. Do you well, agree? Yeah, he would still have to do it. Absolutely. Is it, no, but got, isn't there uh, always a way? Don't defendants always have a way to file something regardless of whatever? Like they're well, looking for some relief even though they bargained it away? That's post-conviction relief, which he bargained away in this plea. So, and he has to do 85%, but really, which of 27 I always feel like there's years, another appeal coming from the defense, always. Well, I don't know, Vin. I tell you, 27 years, 85%, two to two, 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 one, that's like 23 years of uh, time that he'd have to spend with regards to same for stealing $9 million, uh, which, as we see in financial crimes, is a pretty substantial sentence. Now, I don't think he's going to get away with the murder situation. And I don't think he's going to be able to pull that one off. But nonetheless, even if he does, there's going to be a retrial. He'll be convicted again. But at least he's guaranteed 23 years in the pokey uh, for the financial crimes that he did. And I think that the judge will accept that. And I think that it's going to move on because, like I said, 23 years for $9 million is a long time, given what we've seen in financial crimes in uh, you know, other courts in this in this country. A lot of victims, though, 12 different victims, 99 cases that he had. So, um, Darnell, what do, what do you think about the double murder conviction? Do you think that another judge will step in and say, well, wait a minute here, wait a minute, um, this isn't right, this isn't right. And what if this jury comes inside the courtroom and you've got some juror members saying nothing happened, and other jurors members saying, oh, yeah, the court clerk said this, this, and that. Well, well, well a couple of things. Can I, if I can start off, I just want to be Al for a moment. Um, Chanley Painter said a lot more Murdoch to come, and I was thinking if I was uh, Al once, I would be thinking a lot more murder doc to come. So I wanted to get a corny joke out from the beginning. Um, oh. And as it relates to, oh. to your question earlier, um, you, you, you really, um, Vinny was hitting on something with, um, with, with, uh, uh, with, with his plea. With um, uh, his plea, he said uh, to me, I think he was putting an Alfred plea out on the low because he's very slick. So he, an Alfred plea says that you don't agree with the facts, but you allow them to find you guilty because if you went to trial, you would likely be found guilty. So when you listen to what he said, he was like, I disagree with a lot of the narrative but I do believe I would be found guilty. So he almost made up his own Alfred plea in the middle of a plea, but he knew he couldn't ask for an Alfred plea under these circumstances because it would have been denied. So that was very slick of him. In terms of your question with the uh, double murder, I think under these circumstances, this is such a high profile case that they'll likely give them a real shake at a new trial because you can't have this man, a high profile guy like that, and have any question about the integrity of that plea or that, or that uh, proceeding. So I think he has a good chance of getting a new trial. Wow. All right, Jennifer Brandt, Alec Murdoch, um, notorious at this point, right? One of the most famous but infamous attorneys in the country, or former attorneys at this point, right? Ex-attorney, right. Ex-attorney, right. right? Um, what do you think he's gonna say tomorrow? What do you think he's gonna say? I don't know how much more he's going to say, uh, Vinny. Uh, he can't get up there like he did in the murder trial and say that he didn't do it because he has already pled guilty. So um, maybe he'll express some remorse um, because it seems like maybe he's turned over a new leaf <laughs> based on what we saw um, these last couple of days. Um, but I don't expect anything very truthful coming out of his mouth. But um, maybe he'll say that he uh, he's sorry for what he did and, and sort of admit to what he already admitted to. You know, he did say he was guilty. He didn't agree with all the narrative, but he he did say that, yeah, he, he did take the money and, you know, that was wrong. Al, getting back to the big picture of what motivated all of this, like, it, it seems like his story is, I got hooked on these painkillers, old football injury, right? Got hooked on these painkillers. 
Could that actually be what happened and derailed his life and his family's legacy? I mean, all those millions that he stole, could they possibly end it up in little pills that he took one at a time? Well, Vin, I mean, if you take- $8 million worth, $9 million well, worth, and that's just, that, that's just what he's admitting to. Percocet on the market, okay, is 75 to $85 a pill. Okay, and if you need to do 10, you know, you do the math on that, and it gets very high, and it does cost a lot of money. And that's why people turn to heroin, because it's the same kind of effect, but a heck of a lot cheaper. So if you have but the money, you spend the money. You, you, instead of turning to heroin, you just pay top dollar for your, for your right. drug that you need. Is yeah, that what you're saying? Exactly. That's what you're saying. They have right. to, but, but I mean, the thing is, is this too. I think that it affected his ability to do what he used to do. And that, you know, so he was not able to get the cases that he was able to get. He was not able to live the lifestyle he was used to. And then he got desperate. And I'm sure he was getting pressure at home. And I'm sure he was getting pressure from the wife, understanding why we can't afford this, we can't afford that. And then he started taking it dishonestly because he was used to living high on the hog. And now he was not getting that kind of money anymore. High so in the I hog, but not hog hunting. Hey, uh, no. Darnell, Jeff Hill, I want you to take a look at this. This is Jeff Hill. He's been arrested, charged with wiretap. He's the technology director at the Carlton County Administration and SLED SLED, the law enforcement agency down in South Carolina, says they're investigating reports of misconduct. He allegedly listened in on a conversation. Oh, by the way, that's the court clerk's son. Oh, wow. Does that, does that further murky up everything down there? Absolutely. Absolutely. This is exactly what I'm talking about. If you got a guy that's such high profile like Alec Murdoch, and he's saying that he didn't get a fair trial, and you just push it along, nothing to see here, folks, that's not going to play well. Um, he, he has a legacy. Whether you like it or not, he has a legacy in that town. And now with this now new arrest connected to uh, the clerk, He's, he's certainly in, in, in a good position to get a new trial. Unbelievable. All right. Al Wunsch, Darnell Cross, and Jennifer Brandt are with us the whole hour. Up next. He murdered George Floyd. Now someone tried to take his life. We have the latest in the stabbing of former officer Derek Chauvin.